Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects Quick Tip Extend Script tutorial. Today we're going to be creating a smart color changer. This script will essentially go through all of the layers in your composition and it will find the color that you tell it, all instances of say white, and it will then change it to whatever color we select. So let's say our target color is going to be white and we want to change it to a purplish pink color. And then we're also going to have a threshold option that allows us to select a range. So it's not going to be exactly just white colors, but if it's within 10% of white, then we also want to change that to purple. So if I go ahead and run this, you can see it changes that immediately to purple and it uses the values we selected. And if we go through our other layers, you can see we've also changed it a couple of times and changed it from white to this purplish pink. So essentially this quick script that has three for loops in it is going to go through all of the layers in your active composition, all of the effects, and all of the properties of the effects. And if it finds a color similar to what you've put in, then it will change it to whatever color you selected. So this is a really effective script and it's less than basically 20 lines of code if you exclude white space. So let's go ahead and get started by opening a new JavaScript file. The first thing we're going to do is call our main function uh, smart color change. Inside of it, we're going to take three parameters, the first of which is going to be the color to change. So in our project's case, it could be white, it could be red, or it could be any of these colors that we want to change. We can define what color we want to change when we actually call the function later on. The second parameter is the new color. This will be the color that we change everything to. And then finally, we'll have a threshold. This will help us search a broader range and not just look for a specific color based on its very specific RGB values. So inside of our smart color change function, the first thing we need to do is define a couple of variables. We're only going to need three for this script. The first one is going to be our change average. What this is going to be equal to is the sort of overall intensity of the color we're searching for. So it's sort of the color to change average. So in order, instead of just averaging them and adding them up and dividing them by the number of them, let's go ahead and just add them up to get the overall intensity. So I'm just going to grab our color to change, which we're assuming is going to be three values. Let's just say one, one, one. Let's, we wanna change white. So the overall intensity is going to be equal to the R value plus the G value plus the B value. So maybe instead of change average, let's call this change intensity. So this is sort of the overall intensity. If it's white, it's the highest intensity. It can be adding up to three. One for R, one for B, and one for the G values. We're gonna use this intensity number to look for colors with similar intensities, and that's how we're going to search for it smartly. And that's sort of what makes this script smart, so to speak. Next up, we're gonna create an empty array called this average. This is going to be equal to later on the average of the current property we're looking at. So as we run through all of our effects, we can basically say average out these colors, okay, next one average out these colors, etc. We're going to be using this as sort of a placeholder for those average colors. And the final variable is going to be our threshold percent. And this is going to be equal to our threshold divided by 100 because when we bring in our threshold, we're essentially going to say 10%. So we want to divide that by 100, which is then equal to 0.1. So we're going to use 0.1 multiplied by the intensity to get our range. All right, so let's go ahead and set up our three for loops here. I'm just going to go ahead and make them here. So for loop inside of a for loop inside of a for loop. The first one, we're going to be looping through all of the layers of our active composition. So to do this, we'll say var i is equal to one. We'll start at layer one. And for i is less than or equal to our app, which is After Effects, our current open project, and our active item, which we're going to assume is a composition. And we want to loop through the num layers, which in this case would be three. And then we'll increment i by one. So this will go ahead and loop through all of our layers. Then we're gonna go one layer deeper. Inside of each of our layers, we need to go through all of the effects. We need to check through each of our effects and each of their parameters to check if there's colors. If there is a color value, then we need to check if it's a, the same color that we want, and if it is, then we want to change it. 
So we're sort of going deep into different levels here and modifying the values. So instead of the next for loop, I'm going to say var e just to switch it up here is equal to one. And this is going to be looping through again the effects. So we start at effect one and go up till effect dot num properties. So we'll say e is less than or equal to our app dot project dot active item. And now that we're inside of the layer loop, we need to grab the current layer. So layer I and then we want to go through and grab the current layers effects. And we want to check how many properties are in the effects. If we got it in this layer here, there'd be one. If we check this layer, there would be two because there's a tritone and a roto brush. And then finally, we'll increment E by one. And then lastly, for each effect of our current layer we're on, we need to go through each of the parameters and check if it's actually a color picker or not. So for the final for loop, we're going to use var k is equal to one, starting at property one of the current effect, and k is less than or equal to our app.project.activeItem, the current layer, layer i, the current effect or effect e, and the num properties of our current effect. And then we'll increment k by one. You can also start to abbreviate some of these. So instead of saying app.project.activeItem every time, you could say comp is equal to that and just replace uh, comp throughout here. And that will just save you some typing, but it is possible to do this the more convoluted way. All right, so now that we have that done, the first thing deep inside of our for loops we're going to do is check something. Now that we have our for loops, let's set up an if statement down in the furthest level. This if statement is going to check if the current property is a color picker. The way we can check this is I have a simple script set up here. Uh, we're going to check if layer one here, we're going to say layer one, the first effect, this tritone effect, and the first property, the highlights here, we're going to check the property value type. We press play here we're going to get 6418. What this is is just a value that After Effects will interpret as sort of this three-dimensional value containing R, G, and B. So if I go back into our script here, I want to check if the current property is equal to this 6418 because I just checked it and that means it's a color or at least it's most likely to be a color. So I'm going to grab my comp, current layer, current effect, and the current property or property k and if the property and i'm going to say if dot property value type is equal to 6418 or that number we got then we know that this is a property that needs to be checked if we know this we need to grab our array up here called this average and we're going to get the average of the current property so let's say we're on highlights here we need to average out the r g and b of these or calculate the intensity and just so we don't get confused, I'll change this to intensity as well. And this is simply going to be equal to our current layer, current effect, and current property dot value. We're going to grab value zero. So the zeroth value. And then we're just going to do the same for the first index and then plus the second index, which will be the B value. All right, so now we've calculated the current intensity so say we were on midtones here, it's going to add the R, G, and B together and get the intensity. Then we need to check, is this intensity within our color to change bounds? So when we actually call our function smart color change, because if we just run this script with the function here, it's not going to do anything. We actually have to call it and give it some colors to change. So let's just say our color to change is white, one, one, one. And then our new color is going to be Let's change everything to black that was white. So zero, zero, zero. And then our threshold will be 10% again. Hopefully that makes sense. The threshold will basically give you a range. If you set it to zero, the color here will need to be exactly uh, white in order to match up with our white here. But if we add something to the threshold like 50, it's going to select a lot more colors to change. So the threshold is just a useful feature to add greater range to the selection of colors we're changing here. So after we've calculated this intensity, we need to check one big thing here. We need to check if it's between the min and max range of our threshold. So I'm going to check if two statements. I need to say in parentheses here and if this parentheses statement here is true. Inside the first statement, we're going to check if this average 
is less than or equal to if the average of the current property we're looking at is less than or equal to our change average plus our change average times our threshold percent. So if I pull out my calculator here, I'm going to grab our threshold percent, which is 0.1, multiply it by our change average. And of course, I need to change these to intensity rather than average. So change intensity and this intensity. So essentially, if we take our change intensity times our threshold percent, or 0.1 in this case, and let's just say our current intensity is three, so it's white, one plus one plus one is three, then it's going to be 0.3 plus that three. So that's gonna give us 3.3 as our upper bound check. If it's less than or equal to 3.3, or we just need to do the opposite. Instead of adding the sort of scalar percentage here, we need to subtract it. And this will give us, if we take our uh, threshold percent, multiply it by our change intensity, or three if it's white, we'll get 0.3 again, but this time we're going to subtract it from our intensity. So we're gonna take three minus 0.3 and we'll get 2.7. So we need to check if it's greater than or equal to 2.7 or less than or equal to 3.3. We know that this is the color we're looking for. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing, but we're just basically trying to define a range that if the intensity is within this range, then we basically need to say, this is the color we need to change. So to change the color, we'll grab our comp and we'll grab the current layer, the current effect, and the current property, and we'll set the value to be our new color. All right, and that's actually as simple as this script is. We can go ahead and run it and check it now. Anytime we run it now, we should change any of these white colors to be black. So if I run it here, you can see it's changed that to black as well as some of our other values. And again, if we change the threshold up to a very high value, then we can actually probably select all of the colors and change them to black. As you can see, a high enough threshold will think everything is similar enough to white. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's quick tip tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, if I went too fast, ask them down below. If you enjoyed the video, press the thumbs up, and as always, subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified of new uploads. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.